Hey guys, how you doing? Mowers and blowers here again. Uh, on my uh, second Toro Snow Commander out of the 11 that I have to uh, triage and uh, fix. So I fixed one out of 11 so far. This is two out of 11. I haven't fixed it yet, but I just pulled it out here. And uh, just looking at it, this model has some overspray of some paint. And uh, it does. this one does have electric start. Um, it's dirty, of course. And the auger paddles look kind of worn, pretty worn actually, but I'm sure it still throws snow pretty well. I won't sell this for uh, top dollar, you know, but uh, if somebody wants to buy it and uh, fix the paddles themselves, more to, more power to you. I'm going to re-bend that back a little. And uh, number one is uh, what I notice is when you engage and pull it all the way, that's what uh, drives the power um, propel is what it's called but once you pull it all the way the handle is not flush against this handle so this um, drive pulley uh, this drive belt is too short it needs to be maybe a couple of notches longer so this is how you fix it well first we'll go here you just, I'm going to try to do this one with one hand hand, it's uh, tough. You try to give it some slack there so that the Z-Bend comes off. And now you have all the slack you want, right? Once you have all the slack you want there, you see the holes? Well, let's, let's put it all the way up to here. There, that gives it like... It was there before, it gives it like an inch. You know what, I'm gonna do it more because we saw that measurement before I was uh, looking at. So we'll do another half inch. There we go, you see that? This goes through there. And then we'll just uh, connect the Z-Bend back again. Really easy to adjust, provided you have the right length. So now when we pull this, Oh, that was too much, see? Now it's flush. However, it's way too uh, long now. It won't even engage the thing. So I was wrong, all right? Even though it looked like that um, amount of give you had to do, it was way too much. So you know what? Before it was there, I'm gonna put it like right you know, here. Come on. There we go, let's try that. It. Okay, it does, but not much. You see what I'm saying? It is flush and it does move, but it looks like it, it needs another link. So I'm going to do that real quick. So I just put it back one more uh, hole, all right? So now check it out. Flush, right, with the handle, nice and comfortable. And it pivots fully all the way. That's what we want. So now that drive belt and uh, auger engagement and the power propel uh, drive belt uh, cable is adjusted correctly for what our application is. And that's how you adjust the uh, auger engagement cable. Uh, at least adjust it, yeah. So uh, you know what? I'm going to primer this. Looks like the primer bolt is actually good. It's uh, probably one of the only good ones out of it. But, you know, I don't really hear any kind of, uh, you know suction of air but uh, what I'm gonna do is this one comes with electric start I'm gonna hook up a uh, power cable to it and see if we can start it up that way so I just uh, hooked up a uh, you know your typical garden extension into the uh, power outlet there and uh, give it a few primes this guy got a choke let's, let's see uh, you know what that's that's scraping yeah Something wrong with that electric start, man. It sounds like a, a lot of scraping noises, so I think the teeth are all gone. If I keep pressing, it's going to be even more gone, but right, I'm going to try pulling it. All right, it's good. It's got compression. Oh, it's got a short, it's got a short uh, um, coil um, rope. Yeah, 
this one's going to need more uh, jigging. It doesn't even seem like there's uh, See that? I think this primer bulb's gone. Yep, there's no suction. And the reason why is because there is a hole there. It's not even retracting, so it's hard and brittle. And there is a crack here. So we're gonna have to change a primer bulb on this. I'm gonna have to dress this. That's a short pull string, pull rope. I don't even know if there's any gas in here. Let's see. You know, it has gas in it, but that primer bulb is not allowing it to um, get gas into the carburetor. Yep, and that uh, starter is definitely screwed. So we're going to have to take this uh, apart a little bit more. The 2516 screw here for the uh, top panel. The, the rusted screw Phillips here to take this cowling off. But I think uh, to get the cowling off, we might have to mess with this. But uh, if we can just lift it up a little bit and pivot it, we can get access to it. But uh, I'll get started on those four screws there. So I'm now in the process of taking uh, a removal of that primer bulb assembly and it was uh, pretty easy. You know, the, the two screws in the front, two bolts to take this uh, panel off and uh, I took that off and as soon as I took that off, this thing just came off and it was all cracked and brittle and there's holes in it and stuff so it definitely wasn't working. So when you pushed it, there was no air that was, see, it's just, you touch it and it, it's just falls apart so that one's done so I've got this other one here it's a generic one it's pretty rubbery rubbery better than the stens but I got that for like dollar eighty five two dollars something like that and I bought five of them so we'll just put that on you guys have seen my other video on uh, primer, primer bulbs on this snow commander but nobody really has a video about uh, disassembling the uh, cowling and uh, checking out that starter so we'll do that now all right so uh, I just uh Put this primer bulb on, it's nice and rubbery. Seems to be good. I pressed it a bunch of times because it wasn't seem, didn't seem to be you know drawing any fluid, but now when I pressed it, it uh, started, you hear that sucking sound, so. Uh, I'm gonna give it a try. Ooh, 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 ooh. We know that that engine runs just fine. Uh, the carburetor seems clean because it runs no problem uh, without bogging down. Uh, we don't know about load, of course, but uh, for prelimin preliminarily, uh, the carburetor it starts for the pull, and it runs well without uh, any kind of um, you know adjustment. So the carburetor seems to be clean. Primer bulb is fixed. Uh, we know the ignition switch works. Uh, pull start while it's short still does its job and starts it. You know. But I still want to take this apart and uh, check out that starter issue, you know, the uh, electric start issue where it was grinding, seems like grinding the gears and stuff. So I, I definitely want to do that. So it looks like this part won't come off unless I remove the chute and its handle. That's a pain. But 
there aren't any videos about the disassembly of a snow commander so I'm gonna do it I'm not gonna do it I'm gonna do it so now we're going to disassemble the um, chute assembly and it is both sides a bolt here and a uh, Phillips there three times okay so basically you need to get a screwdriver and hold it there to prevent it from moving with one hand and with the other hand use a uh, one half nut driver these things are great so uh, see as you turn it there I've already loosened it a little bit it moves along with it so I'm gonna have to remove all three there with both hands so I removed all three uh, bolts and this thing just collapses on you see the handle assembly is clipped onto two of the holes or all three of them actually and that just comes off and this thing comes right off and you know what this is metal not the plastic this is metal this top uh, shoot directional part is um, plastic but that comes right off so now that we've got that off um, take the gas cap off and you should be able to take this off there we go all right <clears throat> Now we have complete access to the starter. And there it is right there. There's a starter motor. And that was what was grinding when we pressed it, you know? And that's what we want to investigate. I can't see anything, you know, without a flashlight. I gotta get a flashlight. And I gotta plug it back in and watch it, you know, move. Everything else looks all right. That was cool. It wasn't that hard, you know? Just good. Alright. I'm gonna plug that thing back in. Alright, so I plugged it in. And I pressed it. So we know the motor works, but uh, once it engaged, it popped up. You know, popped into the gear area, the flywheel area. The flashlight there. And you could see that it's engaged, right? And it's just grinding. So I'm thinking the, the, the teeth are just all gone, you know, in which case it, it renders this pretty much useless. Um, the, the gear itself, the teeth, that sprocket is kind of expensive. Uh, I looked into it before and it was like 40 bucks or something for just that kit, you know? I don't really need the whole kit. They just recommend you to get the whole kit because you want to change the washers and uh, the seals and the O-rings and all that stuff, but I just need the, sp the sprocket, you know, the gear, and that's like forty bucks. Well, I don't, I'm not going to spend forty bucks since I bought this for forty-five, the whole thing, you know. So I'm just probably going to try to remove this starter altogether and sell the motor itself on eBay. Maybe I'll get twenty bucks for it. So, um, well, I mean, I'll go and see if I can find a gear, but I doubt it because I've done it before, I, I know I have. And uh, so I'm gonna remove this um, starter and uh, probably sell just the motor itself on eBay. Somebody will buy it for 20 bucks because they probably have a bad motor and they have a, a gear that's good. So they can just put their gear on my motor and they'll be good to go. Um, but people out there are not gonna just sell the gear for 10 bucks or something. That's what I'll pay. I'll pay 10 bucks for the gear, but I won't pay 40. So I'm gonna take that off and it's just one bolt there and then the other one on the other side is a pain to get to and I don't want to take off all the panels to do it because that's labor intensive looks like on the very bottom there there's a hole where I could probably get a, uh, a nut driver in there and then loosen up that one hopefully uh, we'll see we'll see what we can do but I'm gonna loosen that bolt first okay guys so you know what so I removed this uh, bolt right here right and it came loose already so i'm like wait a minute that other side was 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 loose see that it's still holding on but it was loose that's what causes this to be offline because it was loose right and therefore when they try to start it it ground up the gears so that was the reasoning behind uh 
why the gears were ground up is because it was loose so i mean it still stands you know the the gears are trashed but that was the reasoning behind why it's trashed but uh, looks like that bolt is just about to come off anyway it'll probably be pretty easy to remove it and uh, i'm going to flip this on its face and uh remove it so i put it on its face to get that other one there was room for me to get a bolt and uh thing in there so check it out man here is the starter and there it is gear is trashed so unless I can get a new gear the only thing that's good on this thing is the motor which you can get good money for it 20 25 bucks 20 bucks yeah because I have sold a few before uh, with the gears trash like that people will buy them uh, all right so remove that screw and uh, take the uh, electrical input assembly there out. So I just removed that bolt and it had a little catchy thing that you saw. You have to replace that bolt back on here because that's what holds the, re that's what holds the uh, recoil starter. So th this is now loose and now I'm just gonna trace it to here where the electric start button is here and there's three bolts there where we're going to use a nut driver that fits perfectly there. So I just removed that assembly there and it's now still attached right there. Pain. I'm just going to cut that thing. So I couldn't cut it because it's steel. So I just uh, remove the remove this bolt. It's just come out. I'll replace that. Oh no! That stop. So successful removal of the uh, starter motor. Here's a close-up view of. Uh, looks like and there's the culprit of it not working gears all rubbed out so I'm gonna take pictures of this thing and um, I'm gonna try to sell it on eBay eBay's great. Get rid of your spare parts. Anyway. So now, uh, this machine has no starter, which, uh, you know, a lot of people don't use anyway. So the pull starts, it runs, and uh, I'm going to put that cover back on, and the panels, and uh, list it. Well, maybe not now. I have one listed already, and uh, once I sell that, I'll sell this one. But, uh, you know, I'm going to wait for a warmer day and get my power washer out and uh, power wash these suckers because they're dirty. And uh, you can't sell stuff that looks dirty. You have to just shine them up, you know, take some time, shine them up. I'm going to put the stuff back together. Okay, so I got it all back together again, and um, it was relatively easy. <laughs> Minus a starter, right? But uh, today we uh, changed the primer bulb. We adjusted the uh, auger drive cable, right? And the uh, power propel engagement. We removed the starter motor because it uh, was trashed and didn't work. We started it up. It has a short pull cord, but it works fine in terms of starting it. And uh, so that's uh, number two out of the 11. So we've uh, done quite a bit now uh, in one afternoon. That's uh, two snow commanders, fixed and ready to go. Just got to shine them up and list them. I'll list them between 250 and 300 Since I got them for $45, no matter what, it's great profit. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.